We've seen our first two static route types in action, the first two of our three regular types, where we have recursive, which is going to specify the next hop IP address, and then directly connected, which specifies the local route or exit interface. Now we're going to write a fully specified route, and that's going to include both of those values. I did run show IPv6 route static just to make sure that my delete went through that we did at the end of the previous video, and it did so we can write this one. Let's go ahead and start with conf t, and I'm going to up arrow a little bit here and bring the original route back up. And I've got a little space there, but that doesn't matter. But me being retentive, you know, we got to get rid of it. And there we go. It's just the way it is. So we've got the IPv6 route command from earlier. And we know that our fully specified route is going to include the local exit interface and the next top IP address. So then all I would have to do is have this, and I could just tack the exit interface onto the end, right? Wrong. You have to watch your order here, actually, because you can't put the local exit interface on the end of this command. Hmm, because there's no option there. There's nothing there for an interface. So what we need to do is go to the middle of this and put in our interface, our local router exit interface. And now I've got IPv6 route, destination prefix, local router exit interface, next stop IP address, and that's it. So let's have a look and see how that looks in the routing table. Probably pretty much the same as the others. Yeah, and you see both a next stop IP address and a local exit interface. And let's go ahead and ping router 4. There I go with a dramatic pause again. But we were able to ping router 4 with no problem at all from router 2, and everything's golden. That's just another way to write the route. And, you know, no right or wrong necessarily. You know, when we go over these things, the most common question is, well, under what circumstances would I write this type or this type? You know, when we went over the IP route command for version 4, you know, we saw how to, use, how to end it with the local router exit interface. We saw how to enter, enter, excuse me, we saw how to end it with the next top IP address. And you will probably develop a preference of your own, but really in production networking, as long as you're getting the data there, it really doesn't matter which one you use. And of course, for the exam, we need to know the ins and outs of all three. Before we move on though, I wanted to show you uh, one kind of quirky thing. Did you happen to notice, and I'm sure you did, this little value right here? Administrative distance, that sounds familiar, <laughs> right? We wrote some floating static routes in IP version 4 earlier, and we can write them in version 6 as well. I want to show you the syntax. We're not going to write one right now because we haven't gotten to the routing protocols yet. We'll write a floating static route later. But I want to show you the syntax of it. And frankly, all you're doing is putting a number on the end of this command, or the end of any static route. And again, you can change the AD of it and that's all there is to it. So if you needed to change this, the stat, the admin distance, let's try that again. Okay. Let's just take it off and then put one back on. Ah, no matching routes to delete. I like that. You notice that? What's missing from there? I called up an earlier no IPv6 route command, but the thing is it says no matching route to delete because the interface is not in the middle of it. So if I wanted to take that off, Bet that goes off. Yep, so that's pretty cool. So no matching route to delete, you know how to handle that. And we've got this one as well. That route is now off. And if I wanted to rewrite it as a floating static route, and let's say I needed to give it an administrative distance of 121, then frankly, all you do at the end of this very long command is tack on 121. You're going to have to trust me on that one. <laughs> and there it is. You'll see this in action later, but I want to show you that syntax now because I know you've seen administrative distance now about 50 times. So, so far, you know, we've been using global unicast addresses for our next top IP address. Nothing wrong with that. But what we can also do is use the next top link local address instead. And that's a handy skill to have, and you're going to start developing that next.